Hi, I'm Glenn Rogers, and this is Biblical Insights. The title of our video today is Mistaken Assumptions. Now, I'll explain what that means in just a few minutes because I realize that some of you may not be sure about what I'm talking about. But this is section number 57 in our study of Jesus' life and ministry based on the Gospel of Mark. And the text we're going to look at today is Mark 12, verses 18 through 27. And I think the best thing to do is just jump right in and go ahead and read this text and uh, see what it, it's... Uh, uh, talking about, and, and then we can explain uh, what we need to explain. So we'll be reading from the Simplified New Testament, which is my translation of uh, the New Testament. Ha this happens to be the fourth edition. <clears throat> so uh, again, remember, this is the uh, last week of Jesus' life, and the Jewish leaders uh, are, are trying to f find something that they can use to accuse him uh, or, or to make the people angry at him. And the Pharisees have already come with a question, and, and Jesus made them look foolish and silly, and they went away uh, confused because they, they hadn't anticipated Jesus' response. And so now a group called the Sadducees are going to give it a try and see if they have any better luck. So let's begin reading. A different group of Jewish religious leaders, the Sadducees, who say that the dead will not live again, came to Jesus with a question. Teacher, the law of Moses says that if a man, uh, married man dies without having children, the man's brother is to marry the widow and have children with her for his brother. Now, there is a family of seven brothers that we know of, the oldest brother married and died without having children. The next oldest brother married the widow, but also died without having children. So did the third brother, and as the years went by, all seven of the brothers had married the woman, yet none of them had children with her. Finally, she died too. Now, what we would like to know is this. When the dead live again, whose wife will she be? After all, she had been married to all seven of the brothers. Your mistake, Jesus said, is in not knowing the scriptures or the power of God. First, when the dead come back to life, there will not be marriages. Everyone will be the same. No more males and females, just people. Everyone will be like the angels. Second, you say the dead will not come back to life, but what about the passage in the book of Exodus when God spoke to Moses from the burning bush? God said, I am the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. He did not say I was, but I am. He is not the God of the dead, is he? You are badly mistaken in what you think about the dead not living again. Now, th this is a very interesting text, and, and there's a lot of background here that we have to talk about and make sure everybody <clears throat> understands it. And one of the things is the identity of this group, the Sadducees. Most of the people are familiar with the Pharisees, but the Sadducees are in there too, and they were the older, more established socio-political group. They were what we might call today ultra conservatives, and they were quite different from the Pharisees, which was a smaller group, and they were more uh, liberal, for lack of a better word, and they believed in angels and spirits, and they believed in the resurrection. But the Sadducees didn't believe in any of those things. They, they were just very much literal people. You know, you got one life and, and you die and, you, you know, we don't see any spirits. We don't see any angels. And if you can't see it, then it doesn't exist, that sort of thing. And uh, they, they, of course, did not embrace the idea of the resurrection of the dead. As far as they were concerned, once you die, you're gone. You're, you're done. You've ended and, and you no longer exist. And that's what they believe. Now, some people would say, 
really? How, how can you be <laughs> religious and not believe in the resurrection, not believe in the soul and the spirit that will survive the death of the body? How, how can you do that? And, and, and that's a good question. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very good question. But the Sadducees managed to, to, to pull it off. They, they believed in the need for religion in life and that this somehow impacted your relationship with God, but they didn't believe that there was anything after death. So they thought, okay, here's how we can trap Jesus in, in, in all this nonsense about the resurrection, right? So obviously they, there was teaching and discussion about the resurrection. Um, and, and we know that from the conversation that Jesus has with Mary uh, regarding the death of Lazarus and, and you know, they, so the, the resurrection was part of the teaching of, of Jesus. But in the Old Testament, there was a law because God was very concerned about growing the nation. And so there had to be a lot of babies born, right? And so he, he, he made a law that said, and they articulated it here exactly right, that if a man marries a woman and he dies before he has children with that woman, then his brother is required to take her as a wife, even if he already has one of his own, that's irrelevant. He's required to take his brother's widow and marry her and have children with her. And then those children are credited to, <laughs> to his brother uh, who died, right? And, and that way uh, he has some uh, children to leave his property to, and they have the name of, of the dead brother and so forth and so on, okay? Now, this is called the Leverite Law. And, and I know that those of you who are from Africa are very familiar with this because uh, the Leverite Law, at least in some parts of Africa, uh, where I lived in Nigeria, um, the Leverite Law was still practiced, and everybody understands that really quite well. Um, and, and so the Sadducees came up with a scenario. Now, what we don't know is if this is an actual true story where there was, uh, were seven brothers, uh, all of whom died without having children and all of whom were married to the same woman. It, did that actually happen? Was that the case? Or were they just creating a hypothetical situation to make a point? We don't know. And it really doesn't matter. It, it just doesn't matter. Okay. It, it, it's a hypothetical in this situation. So they're saying, here's a guy who, who marries a woman, doesn't have children, dies. Her, uh, his brother marries her, doesn't have children, dies. And then the third brother, the fourth brother, the fifth brother, and so forth, all seven brothers have her as uh, their wives, their wife, and yet none of them produce children. They didn't really care about that part of it. The part they cared about and, and what they thought was an unanswerable question is in the resurrection, when the dead come back to life, whose wife will she be? And I can just see Jesus, you know, <laughs> kind of shaking his head and going, oh, come, come on, guys. Right. What, what you fail to understand is, is the, the, the power of God and the scriptures. They didn't understand what the Bible actually taught. Okay, so here's what we need to talk about. Their mistaken assumptions. Now, what does that mean? Well, we know what a mistake is. You make a mistake, that means you, you were wrong, you did it badly, whatever. What's an assumption? And, and many of you will know that word, obviously, but some of you, for some of you, it, 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 for whom English is, is your second language, uh, it, it may not be a word that's familiar to you. An assumption is a belief that you have, but you haven't done any checking to see if there's a good reason for you to have that belief. In other words, you just, you just believe it. Why? Well, I don't know. I just believe it. Okay, that's an assumption. Something that you believe, but you haven't looked into it. You haven't done any study. You haven't thought about it very deeply to see if there's any good reason why you should believe that. Okay, that's an assumption. Now, we all have assumptions. Everybody, 
There's nothing wrong with having assumptions. Everybody has them. You can't function without assumptions. But sometimes having an assumption that's not valid because if you look into it, there's, there's no good reason to believe that, right? And so those kind of assumptions can sometimes get us into trouble. And that's what happened here. They assumed that spiritual beings and physical beings, in other words, angels and humans, were the same kind of beings. That they had a body and that they had sex, male and female, and that they got married and reproduced just like humans. Now, why would anybody believe that? I guess because they never really stopped to think much about it. They just assume, well, this is the way we are. So therefore, that must be the way they are too. But, but see, that's really not a good assumption because spiritual beings are different kinds of beings. There's no reason to think they're exactly the same as we are. You see, the physical side of us requires that we reproduce because the physical side of us gets old, sick, dies, and we're gone on into the next life. Well, you, you've got to have new people to replace the old people who die, right? And so we reproduce. We have children. And that's how we propagate the species. But spiritual beings don't get old and die because they are the same kind of being as we are once you take away our physical body, okay? The soul, the spirit, the mind, the heart, the inner us, the part that's the real us, okay? That doesn't die. The body dies, but not the real us. We don't die. We continue to live. Okay, we don't need to be replaced. They don't, we, we don't have to make more of us because when we die, there, there's nobody there. And so we have to have a replacement. It, it, see, that's true of, our, of us physically, but that's not true of us spiritually. We don't have to replace ourselves because we continue to exist. We will exist always, forever. Once God creates us, we will always exist. The physical part of us, the physical body will die, but the real us will always exist. And, and so we don't need to reproduce spiritual beings. We are, in that sense, we're, we're like God, and the spiritual beings he produced are the same. They, they don't get old and die, so they have no need to reproduce. Angels have no sex. There are no male angels and female angels. There's just angels. And, and I don't even like that word. That's not a good word because the word angel means messenger, right? And some are used as messengers and they come and they have message, but a lot of them aren't messengers. They, they, don't, they never get a message to deliver, okay? So I prefer the term spiritual beings. And spiritual beings have different jobs and they do different things, okay? Spiritual beings don't have sex organs. There are no male spiritual beings, no men. And there are no women spiritual beings. There are just spiritual beings. Now, what Jesus was saying is obviously your question about this man who's been married to this woman, uh, uh, and, and then dies, and then his brother marries her, and then another brother marries her, until all seven brothers have had her for a while. Wh whose wife will she be? Jesus is saying, dumb question, okay? Not a good question. It's based on an erroneous assumption that, that angels or spiritual beings reproduce, and therefore they get married and have sex and have children. See, he's saying that's a bad assumption. You're wrong. You're mistaken. Okay, angels don't get married. There's no marriage in the afterlife. In the next world, there's no marriage. And there is no sex. You know, and, and this is one of the confused beliefs that the Muslims have, you know. And, and, and so you, you have 
uh, people, terrorists who are going around blowing themselves up, becoming martyrs for the cause, and they think their reward is going to be in the next life, uh, they're going to get 70 virgins. To be... No, see, in the next life, th there's no male and female, there's no boys and girls, there's no sex, there's no babies, there's no having sex, okay? The, uh, we're, all, we're just people, we're, we're beings. And when we don't need to reproduce, and so there's no sex, and so there's no marriage, okay? So that was number one. That was the first thing that Jesus said. You're mistaken in that assumption and thinking that spiritual beings uh, get married and have sex and all that, like human beings. That's, that doesn't happen. It's not true. And the second thing is he said, you, you, you think that, that nobody comes back from the dead. Well, of course they do. Because the physical body dies doesn't mean your spirit is gone, doesn't mean you cease to exist. And so he raised a question uh, about the text in Exodus where God is talking with Moses. This is Exodus 3. And Moses says, well, who are you? And he says, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jesus' point was, he didn't say, I was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said, I am the God. It's a present uh, reality, right? It's a present ongoing reality. Well, the only way that could be true is if Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob still existed. See, that's, that's a very good argument. That's a very good argument. It's the argument Jesus used. And what was he saying? Just because the physical body dies doesn't mean you no longer exist. Of course you exist. The real you is still there. You still exist as an individuated self. Abraham still existed as Abraham, even though his body had died. Isaac and Jacob still existed as Isaac and Jacob, even though their bodies had died long ago. They were still alive, thinking beings in the next phase of their existence, right? And, and so Jesus is saying, see, you, you don't understand because you have mistaken beliefs, mistaken assumptions, now, why is this a big deal? Well, because the resurrection is one of the key doctrines of Christianity, okay? If, if Jesus had, had come and lived and died and that was it, he's just dead, he'd gone, then, then none of this matters. If when you get old and die, you're just gone, then, <coughs> excuse me, none of this matters, you see? There, there can't be any eternal consequences to anything if you no longer exist. You do exist. You continue to exist, and there will be a resurrection, right? Um, it, it, to, to say that there won't be a resurrection is to deny what the Bible clearly teaches, and it's not logical. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm having problems with my throat. <clears throat> this morning. So, there's a there's a passage in the Old Testament that I want to talk about because there's a mistake in interpretation there. <clears throat> and it has to do with a text in Genesis 6 where it talks about the uh, sons of God saw that the daughters of men were very beautiful and they married them. Well, uh, one traditional interpretation of that text is that the sons of God are angels and the daughters of men are humans and that angels and humans uh, cohabitated, lived together, had sex, had children, and created this race of Nephilim, the, the giants and so forth and so on. And, and you have then, you know, fallen angels and all sorts of other things that have nothing to do with any kind of reality. This is just a nonsensical application of a text because people have mistaken assumptions, right? Angels cannot have sex with human beings because angels or spiritual beings don't have sex organs. They don't have a male body or a female body, right? There's only just the body without the sex organs. Spiritual beings do not have sex. 
That's something that humans do, and the only reason we do it is to propagate the species so there continues to be human beings. But in the next phase of life that's not physical, there will not be any sex. Now, I know some of you are saying, oh, man, that's terrible. No, so, well, how come we got away? <laughs> okay, yeah, I get it. There will be something else that's better. Better than sex? Yeah, yeah. Okay, there's, there's another whole reality out there that we don't even begin to understand, and it will not involve reproduction. Therefore, it will not involve sex. Angels did not marry humans and have sex with them and create this race of giants and super beings and all that. That's a, that is utter nonsense. If somebody teaches you that, you need to get away from them and go someplace else where, where the people are more educated and understand the scriptures and understands the truth. And, and, and this is part of what Jesus was saying here. He says, your mistake is you don't understand the scripture. And you don't understand the power of God, right? They were just confused all the way around. They had mistaken assumptions. Lots of people have mistaken assumptions about lots of different stuff in the Bible. And this is why we need to spend a lot of time studying and a lot of time thinking, making sure we understand what the real truth is. And Jesus has articulated it very clearly in this text. The resurrection will happen, that the dead do live again, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are still alive, right? And, and when you die, when your body dies, you will still be alive. You will still exist. So will I. And in the next world, there won't be marriage. There won't be those kind of relationships. And there won't be any sex. There will be other things, but it won't involve sex and reproduction, okay? So the question that they were asking, whose wife will she be, was a silly question. It was just a silly question. Didn't make any good sense because they had mistaken assumptions. Do you have some mistaken assumptions? Nothing wrong with having assumptions. We all have them, right? But you need to make sure that there's a good reason for you to have those beliefs and that you haven't simply accepted something as true, you know, because somebody told you. Just because somebody tells you, even if they're standing up in front of a group and proclaiming themselves as a teacher, doesn't mean what they're telling you is right and true. You need to study for yourself and figure it out for yourself. Okay? So you think about these things. And as you do, as always, read your Bible, pray, go to church, and may God bless.